Greetings all, Dubious Khan here, and welcome to Into the Idiot Box at Salt Lake Comic Con Fan Experience. It's about 9 a.m., and there's things haven't really gotten started yet. They're still setting up. It's not until this afternoon that the door is open to the public. But before that, we're going to be seeing a press conference and get some footage from there. I'll hopefully talk to some of the guests who attend. And we're going to look around, talk to some other guests, and hopefully get a few other things with uh, people who are attending, cosplayers, stuff in the dealer's room, all sorts of fun stuff. So stay tuned as we go into the Idiot Box at Salt Lake Comic Con Fan Experience. So uh, here we are in the vendors area. Uh, as you see, nothing happening just yet, as I said. Still early. It's the calm before the storm. In a scant few hours, this entire place will be teeming with raging geeks. Seeking to that ever elusive autograph with the celebrity they've always wanted to meet. Or just picking up a bunch of random crap. Things are going to be interesting around here. Yes, I've played Tommy the Green Ranger, many other color rangers, but uh, right now I'd like to thank the local heroes, the true heroes, for being here on stage today. Let's give them a big hand. These are the real life heroes right there. Well, anyway, I'm very excited to be here at Salt Lake City, Salt Lake City Comic Con. We're going to have a lot of fun. Anyway, I'd like to introduce my good friend, and promoter, Dan Ford! Let's give him a big hand. Here he comes, ladies and gentlemen. Woo, yes! Riding the Harley in with the bear! Give him a big hand one more time! Awesome. Dan, thank you. I wonder if I should be a little nervous about this. I don't know. Um, I, uh, with the writing of the Harley, I appreciate the jazz bear bringing me in. I, I, last time that happened, I said, it's a good thing my parents aren't here because they, I've always been taught since I was young not to ride motorcycles. Well, my parents are here, so I'm in trouble. But um, um, I wanted to take a minute just to make some introductions here and also, um, Thank you all for being here and the support that we've had uh, from the media and from everybody in Salt Lake City. Um, I, uh, my, by the way, my name is Dan Farr. I know I've been introduced here, but I'm the producer of Salt Lake Comic Con, and uh, it's been such an amazing opportunity. But I'd like to take a, a minute to thank, again, I heard Jason had thanked our great uh, servicemen and, and uh, the police department, the uh, fire department, everything, you know, we have so many great heroes in this city, people that help us all. And I want to thank them for being here. So uh, next I'd like to introduce Governor Gary R. Herger. Let's see where he is. He's going to come up and join us here. As he's coming up, he doesn't have to run, but as he's coming up, I want to tell you, I can, I can pretty much guarantee no other Comic-Con has had the support from the... Uh, no other Comic Con has had the support that, that uh, Governor Herbert has given us. And he is, um, he even last time, he went and picked up Stanley at the airport when he came in. Uh, and I also want to bring up my business partner, Brian Brandenburg, if I could uh, find him somewhere and then uh, turn the time over to Governor Herbert. Well, thank you, Dan. I'm honored to be here and uh, appreciate the good work of many that have put this uh, Comic-Con on and uh, appreciate the good work of people. I, I think we need heroes in life and it's nice to have so many superheroes here today and through this Comic-Con. Uh, as Utah's governor, I have a significant role to play. I don't think I'm a, necessarily a superhero, 
but I don't take myself too seriously in the role of governor either. But I do, I want you to know, have my own action figure. <laughs> so, uh, and uh, I see, feel right at home with the action figures that we're going to have here today and uh, with my own action figure bobblehead doll there. Um, let me just suggest to us all that th this is a kind of a unique thing that's taking place here, the phenomena that we have around the country, but no uh, more unique than it is here in Salt Lake City. Uh, I congratulate Dan Farr and Brian Brandenburg for their efforts of find this, finding this niche in the marketplace here in Utah and bringing the Comic-Con here. They kind of personify the adage of go big or go home. They've done this in a significant way, and uh, they put this uh, again this past September, as a lot of you know, was the largest uh, Comic-Con in its inception in North American history. And uh, it was epic in its proportions, and uh, uh, the largest convention we've ever had here in Salt Lake City. Uh, 52,000 tickets were sold, over 72,000 72, people have participated remarkable event and uh, and this year as we sometimes wonder is the sequel going to be better than the original and uh, uh, the expectations are that in this case the sequel is going to be even bigger and better than the original here i know we're planning on nearly a hundred thousand people to come and participate here at the comic con fan X, uh, convention here uh, this weekend. So not only 100,000 people, but they've doubled, doubled the floor space for more exhibits, and more opportunities. They've got a place set aside for the young people uh, to have a, uh, a specialized area for them to visit. And uh, their Salt Lake Comic Con Facebook page, and this is the proof, you know, is the most popular Facebook now <laughs> in all of uh, Utah. So uh, again, they're doing some great things. And why not? We see uh, many of the stars that are listed uh, they're going to be here. William Shatner's coming back. Billy Dee Williams uh, from Star Wars and others of that cast. I see my friend Mickey Dolans is over here from the Monkees. Uh, great to have Mickey here with us. Shanda Riggs from The Walking Dead, just to name a few. So it's going to be a great opportunity for people of Utah and, and the Salt Lake area and others even outside to come and hobnob with some of their figures and, and, uh, and get to know them and see them up close and personal. Our slogan in Utah, as some of you know, is life elevated. And uh, we think uh, life should be elevated. We aspire to greater heights and uh, become better people. Uh, and uh, I like uh, uh, Dr. S uh, or Leonard Demoise as uh, Mr. Spock in Star Trek, where he said, live long and prosper. So we say to all of you, may the force be with you. Uh, the one uh, superpower I do have as a governor is the ability to do decorations. So I'm going to exercise my superpowers here on this decoration I'd like to present. Uh, to, whereas in the beginning there was one Salt Lake Comic Con and it showed us that it is good to follow our passions and act like, dress like, and live like, nay, to be heroes. Whereas the great state of Utah and Comic Con fans throughout the land, in conjunction with Dan Farr Productions, created a record setting, sold out inaugural Salt Lake Comic Con event, which created a greater demand for heroes and opportunities to don a cape and perform acts of heroism. Whereas Salt Lake Comic Con Fan X is expected to draw more than 100,000 attendees and to be a forum for fans from all walks of life or circumstances to be heroes as well as to create more awareness and opportunities for more Utah residents to unleash their inner heroes in their everyday lives. Whereas today is the day to become a hero for those who matter most in our lives. Today is the day to ensure that in the brightest day or in the blackest night, no evil shall escape our sight and our might. And whereas from this day forward, Comic-Con fans throughout the great state of Utah and beyond are encouraged to be heroes to our families and communities by helping and protecting one another so our communities will be a better place to live, to work, and to play, and our great state will be a shining beacon of light and hope. Now, therefore, I, Gary R. Herbert, governor of the great state of Utah, to hereby declare April 17, 2014, 
as Comic-Con Heroes Day in Utah, and I've affixed my signature. So congratulations to all. Gang, first interview here on Into the Idiot Box at Salt Lake Comic Con Fan Experience. I've lucked out, got the person I really wanted to talk to. Ladies and gentlemen, the one and only, the mistress of the dark, Cassandra Peterson, a.k.a. Elvira. Cassandra, thank you very much for taking the time to talk to us. You're welcome. Thank you. So, what do you, uh, what do you think attributes your longevity? What makes Elvira so appealing to everyone? Oh, golly, I don't know. I, I think being attached to Halloween, you know, having become kind of the queen of Halloween, um, no. has given my career a real boost because I kind of disappear throughout the year, but I'm always back on Halloween. It's like Santa Claus, you know? Yep. He has the same kind of gig as I do. Yeah, you yeah. have a lot of stuff that you do. Uh, just recently, last year, you did Knott's Berry Farm with Elvira Cinema Seance. I heard right. that was a great thing. I have, yeah. haven't had a chance to get out there myself. But it's it's fun. It's, you know, the biggest, uh, largest and oldest uh, Halloween venue in the country, so it's awesome to be a part of that again. <laughs> Amazing. Um, so you've done pretty much everything as far as the media goes yeah, during your 30 plus years 30 plus years yep. uh, years in there we, we won't talk we won't talk about actual talk ages about no 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 <laughs> you still look lovely as ever so um, but uh, so you've done you've done movies you've done comics you've done television obviously uh, you also did a series a brief very brief series of young adult novels in fact somewhere in my archives I still have a copy of Transylvania 90210 yes, I <laughs> yes, they were classics hey I thought they were fun in there. Um, so what's up in the future for you Is there any plans for any other movies or anything like that? Yeah, well, actually, I'm working on a couple of projects right now. Um, I'm working on uh, my autobiography, which is way overdue. I think I've been writing it for about 30 years, and I haven't quite gotten it together. <laughs> and that will so. be titled what for right now? What is it titled right now? I don't know. Temporary title, um, Confessions of a Glamour Ghoul. I don't know. <laughs> I, that out there. But, um, I love it. Yeah, thank you. Oh, so. And so, so I'm writing that and uh, really making up my mind to get that done. And then I'm working on an uh, uh, my next big project that I'm working on getting launched is a um, an animated um, television show. Oh, that would be great. Yeah, so. so would it be for prime time or? I, you know, I don't know. I don't know. We're going uh, uh, with an agent pitching all different directions for it. So all right. We'll see. All right. Well, I don't want to take up too much of your time. There's other people waiting, so we're just going to finish this off with what I like to call the random five random favorites. I'm just going to rapid fire five things of, of your favorite things. Just answer as quickly as you can. Okay. I am kind of holding an unofficial contest to see how many people who gets through them the fastest. All right. You ready? Okay. Yeah. Here we go. Favorite movie. Oh God, you are coming here for me. House on Haunted Hill. Okay. The Vincent Price version, I assume. Okay. Uh, favorite book. Uh, Interview of the Vampire. All right. Favorite band or music artist? Uh, right now, Jack White. Uh, favorite sandwich? Uh, <laughs> oh, God. Anything veggie. Okay. And finally, uh, favorite candy bar? Mm, oh, oh, those uh, uh, Butterfingers. Butterfingers. All right, great. Cassandra Peterson, thank you very much for your time. I appreciate it. All right, folks, second interview here at Sully Comic Con Fan Experience with the man, the myth, the legend, a gentleman who's known for his acting, for his, for his musicianship, and, of course, for his impeccable taste in hats, Mickey Dolenz of the Monkees. <laughs> uh, Mickey, thank you so much for taking the time. I make sure I'm actually looking at your face. I'm not blinding you with the light, am I? All right, great. Um, so, pretty much as everyone knows, the Monkees have become cultural icons throughout the time, and um, really, uh, just generally speaking, I grew up watching the reruns on MTV. That's when I first got hooked, and then I went through my parents' vinyl collection and discovered your first album in, in the mess in there. Um, what is that? Uh, this, I'm, I try not to ask the same old questions that you've heard a thousand times before. Uh, you've gone on record as saying that Pleasant Valley Sunday is your favorite song that the Monkees ever did. No, one of them. One of them, great. Yeah. Uh, personally, I've always been a fan. I'm going to buy me a dog. That's always been one of my favorites. Uh, but I did have a question about your song that you wrote, Randy Scouse Get. Uh, what possessed you at some point while you were writing it to go, you know what this song needs? 
needs kettle drum. <laughs> where, where did the kettle drum come from? In there? Just... Good question. I was in the studio. I don't remember, uh, you know, very clearly. We were recording an album, and I guess I we laid down the tracks, and I sang it, and we were overdubbing other parts, and I guess I just said that needs a kettle drum. <laughs> I don't remember. No, well, that's, that's, that's fine. a good question. I, yeah. I don't remember that. <laughs> um, this is so I noticed that you're actually wearing the Hendrix Experience shirt, which is probably one of the most interesting things since I, I did read your autobiography before coming here, and uh, you essentially more or less discovered Jimi Hendrix. Well, much. Oh, it's, <laughs> and it's it always fun, and dangerous you know, to claim like fraternity in, in these cases, uh, but I saw him uh, at the Monterey Pop Festival, and I'd seen him before and, uh, playing in New York, and I just thought he'd make a good uh, opening out. He was very theatrical, you do this? and the Monkees was very theatrical, so I thought it would make a good, so just good mix. Real quick. Okay. Well, since your time with the Monkees, you've done your own projects. Uh, you've become a noted television director in the UK, and over here, I assume, I couldn't find anything information not, not much directing over here, but some. But some? mostly over here since, since then is uh, musical theater. Oh, well, that's that's right. You uh, you did that land a role on Broadway in Aida. That was incredible that's right. to do. Um, so what are you working on these days? Well, there's a monkey tour coming up in May. I have solo shows that I do all the time. Possibly a new play back east. Uh, uh, and, you know, other stuff. I have out kitchen shows as a director, producer in Hollywood. All right. Well, that's great. Even busy. Uh, as you should. Still looking great, uh, even with that uh, busy schedule. So I'm going to wrap this up with what I like to call the random five random favorites. I'm just going to rapid fire five things of, that are your favorites and uh, just try to answer them as quickly as you can. I have an unofficial contest going on okay. to see who can answer them quickly. Uh, you're in luck. I just talked to Cassandra Peterson. She took about a minute and a half. So you're okay on that one. All right, you ready? Here we go. Favorite movie? Uh, I'm, I'm going to be very slow at this. Uh, <laughs> favorite movie, Dr. No. Okay. Uh, favorite book? Um, on Human Nature. Uh, favorite music artist or group? Beatles. Uh, favorite sandwich? Salami and Swiss cheese. Favorite candy bar? You know. All right. Thank you very much, <laughs> Mickey Dolenz. Uh, that's more. More coming from Into the Idiot Box here at Salt Lake Comic Con Fan Experience. Thank you.